I'm going to now introduce uh, a few additional components, two additional components that we need to make our first project work. Uh, this first component is a capacitor. Both of these capacitors are, are identical, so we will focus on one of them. A capacitor is, is a storage device. It stores electrical power. And uh, the data sheet of the AVR chip recommends that we place capacitors close to the chip where power is first introduced into the chip. The reason for this uh, reserve power or these capacitors nearby is to uh, supply the needed power when there's fluctuation or there is a drop in the power from the power source and also to, to supply additional power demand or power needed by the chip when the chip is doing um, uh, some, when the chip requires some extra power, for instance, when it's doing a multiply or when, it, when it's internally switching uh, frequently. Uh, so what I will do is basically take my capacitor and in order to get it as close as possible to the chip, I will find um, a convenient place on my breadboard to connect it to the circuit that I have built so far. Yeah. On the right here, you can see that power is first introduced to the chip by the red and the black wire. So the, the most ideal place to put the capacitor would be right next to it. Now again, I have to use my knowledge about breadboards and I know that all of the connections along a row are internally wired together. And this is how the black is connected to the pin of the chip. Well, using the same logic, I know that my capacitor is also connected to the black and the pin of the chip. I use the same approach to get a capacitor very close to the microcontroller on the right side. Remember that power is being applied to the chip in two areas from the two sides and we need to place capacitors close to where that power first enters the chip. And I use my knowledge about the breadboard internal structure uh, to accommodate that. The other component, um, the only other component that we need to make this first project work is an LED. An LED is like a light bulb. It's a simple electronic device that um, if we were to apply power to it, a voltage to its terminals, it will light up. And um, we will be applying this voltage to it through the chip's general purpose I.O. pin. A general purpose I.O. pin of a chip is an output that we can control through software. We can write some software that will turn that chip on, meaning apply power to it, or turn it off, eliminate that power from that pin. If you were to go back to the chart that tells us what the pins on the AVR do, we will identify the very first general purpose pin. Number one, and we will connect this to an LED in this fashion. This is the symbol for an LED. Electrical engineers use symbols for various components. And everything in between is the wiring. And this is the symbol for ground or the negative side of our power supply, black. So what we have to accomplish is to take our LED and to connect one side of it to pin number one and the other side of it to ground. You need to remember that LEDs have polarity. There is a plus side to an LED and a minus side to an LED. You will know which side is which by examining the length of the lead of the LED. This particular LED has been clipped so the length of both of its terminals is the same. But when you purchase a new LED it will have one of the terminals be longer than the other one. 
the longer wire, the longer out, um, sticking out of the LED is the plus, and the shorter one is the minus. So going back to my breadboard, as you can see, the output pin number one connects to one side of the LED, and the other side, the other pin of the LED, jumps over and connects to my ground rail.